two two. Spot the content director. <laughs> it's the like last one, everyone. Cheer up. I feel like we should be in the horseshoe or something with these mics, so uh, get ready for some S Club 7 at the end. Um, thanks for having us today, it's really nice to be here. We've been asked to come here and speak to you um, about the rebrand of our Greatest Hits Network in Scotland, uh, which we announced recently is going to become um, Greatest Hits Radio. Um, so I've got three of my favourite people in the world with me. Hello, you three. Oh, you said that to everybody. I do. <laughs> it's because we uh, suck up regularly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, do, you, do you want to introduce yourself, Michael? Yep, so I'm Michael, content director for Fourth One, which is about 10 metres away, and content director for Great Sits Radio in Scotland. Uh, I'm Arlene, I'm the radio wife of this man next to me, Boogie, and um, we've been working on the Fourth One Breakfast Show for 15 years now. Yeah, 15 years together. Um, I, I've just finished 20 years well, I haven't finished. I'm not finished yet. Um, <laughs> I've, uh, it's an exclusive. On, I've, last week I uh, celebrated 20 years on the Fourth One Breakfast Show. I worked at um, Fourth Two before that, and North Sound Two, which are about to be incorporated in the greatest hits. You've not mentioned that 20 years thing before. Has no, it? first time. Um, yeah. So as I said, we um, announced on the 12th of January, which actually feels already like a lifetime ago, Michael. I know it does for you and I. Anyway, two weeks away. Uh, yeah, indeed. Um, but the, about the rebrand, can I just come to you first um, and explain the reasons on why we've made this decision to move away from heritage brands like Clyde 242 and become Greatest Hits Radio for Scotland? Yeah, so just to give you a bit of context, we're talking about the Greatest Hits Radio network. So 42 is through there. We've got Clyde, we've got West Sound down in Dumfries right up to MFR2 in the north of Scotland. And it's been a brave decision because it's one of those that there's people in the room that help set up like Radio 4 and 42 and stuff. And it's been a conversation for years like, what do we do with these stations? Because we're getting some brilliant presenters on it, but just, you know, the elephant in the room, there's a perception issue with these stations. So we could put in Big and Arling, we could have Ewan and Kat, we could have George Barry, the big dance DJ from Glasgow. And I think there's a perception that people go, it's for your granny and granddads. Now, your fourth twos and Clyde twos in the past, they were huge stations, but there's been a lot of talk about evolving and perception changing. And I think, I don't know who we blame, it's not me and Vic, but it was maybe about 10, 15, 20 years ago, these stations didn't move on. Now, we're not really talking about like the daytime shows, but do you want to hear my impression of an accordion? Yeah, so it's hey, so it's like all those kind of like Scottish music shows and the Irish shows, my dog died, all that kind of stuff. It's like there's kind of I'm not gonna sing, but there's these kind of perception issues with these shows from like 20 years ago where people are going, oh, I kind of like what Four of Two is doing, I like what Clyde Two is doing, and they're listening, but they're actually not admitting it because it's like it's for the old people. Now I think people in their 40s, 50s, 60s now, the granny and granddads of the world. They're much cooler, but you know, you can imagine like 30, 40 years ago, they had like the tweed jumper on and all that kind of stuff. So it kind of felt like this is what I mean. This has been a massive conversation for years is what do we do with these stations? And you know, this has been a decision that's been made in Scotland. We've seen the winds down south of Great Hits Radio, but we've gone, it doesn't matter who we get on, we have to change. So we've got a kind of clear proposition of what we're going to do. And I think you know, you guys can back that up from as presenters because I've had so many presenters going. Mm, don't know if I want to go across and do a show there. Well, I've been looking forward to it for years now, actually. And I'm surprised <laughs> I'm still on Fourth One. However, having said that, it was always the perception, because I started out on Fourth Two, and it was always the perception that it was for an older audience. They're maybe, you know, just a little bit dull. And um, it, it's been needing that refresh for many, many years. And I know, as my radio husband, it was the one thing you've always said, I will never go to Fourth Two. <laughs> Yeah, no, that that is that is true. I've I've um I was in fourth two before, um in sort of two thousand one two thousand two, and um when I was moved over at fourth one, I sort of vowed I'm never going back. I'll never go back to fourth two, um because it it just it didn't sit right. But I think with the new brand, um and it's it's now becoming a station which as a presenter I kind of aspire to be on. You know, we've got some big names coming, um some of my people that I've looked up to in the industry for a long time are going to be on the station. Um, and and it's just, it's it feels like a big, sexy radio station where it doesn't feel like it's um, a sort of, it, somewhere where people go to die at the end of their radio career. It's 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 somewhere where you actually aspire to, 
to be on at a, a certain point in your career. But what's nice about it is the the local offering is still there. You know, for all of the stations, there's going to be the local news, there's going to be the local travel, there's going to be local information. You know, done in splits, etc. So I think they're getting the best of both worlds. And I think once we get over the we're losing the fourth two heritage name, I think they'll be very excited by what the offering is. I yes. think as well. Sorry, Michael. Um, just what's been really interesting is that rebrands have often at times been seen as a really negative thing. And I think across commercial radio, you can see that's not always the case uh, with some huge success stories. But certainly for Michael and I in management with these brands was that we had all the team coming to us before we'd even had a chance to really think about this and say, you know, this is what we think should be happening. And it was everyone. I remember the day we sat with the greatest hits team from Scotland in the boardroom at Radio Clyde. And every single person around the table was like, this is the right thing to do. And we are absolutely buzzing to be part of it. So we walked out that day, didn't we, ready to like run through walls and being, you know, come on, let's absolutely do this. And I think, you know, we're seeing the, the, the best of the Scottish talent that we've got on there, including you guys, has been and how excited you've been to be part of it is really refreshing and really exciting to see that you guys are like, what can we do next? When, when fourth first split, to fourth one and fourth two AM and FM as it was at the time. Actually, it was the AM. It was the two that that was the bigger of the two stations. Um, you know when it split, and um, it was it was massively more successful than fourth one. And it's just in time. It's just like it was just left, and it just slowly went downhill. Um, and obviously, fourth one took over. And you know the the natural balance I think in in radio when you look at the demographic of who listens is probably favours an older audience, so that's great it's going to be strong. Yeah, and I think ironically is the network right now has its highest listening figures, so it's a brave move, but we know it's going to plateau, so we kind of th feel like this could like double the audience. So, Greatest Hits Radio, on to the future. Music, biggest hits, 70s, 80s and 90s, a clear music proposition. We're all about the good times, content, presenters like Boog in Ireland, people that you know and love, and what's the last one? I don't even know my own brand. Local, so yeah, Scotland. So we've got like the right shows, you and Cat launching it in the right kind of places, you know, people like you and Cat, Boog in Ireland, but we've got people like Simon Mayo, and we can have like the local news, travel, all that kind of stuff. So we feel like we've got a really good proposition. We know this station could double, triple its audience in the next couple of years. Yeah, well, that's definitely the aim. And, you know, just bringing up a massive picture of you Jeez, two. Jeez, that what you look like? My God. Wow. Um, I should have warned you Very for that well. one, shouldn't I? Um, now, obviously, just touching on sort of fourth one um, breakfast for the minute, we've obviously got, uh, just to throw it in there, your 23.4% share of breakfast and fourth one at the minute. So hugely successful across Edinburgh, the Lothians, Fife and Falkirk, and also on a nine-year high. You know, the station is highly performing. Um, and you're obviously now making that move and being part of the lineup. How does it feel to be included in that lineup and this new brand? And, you know, we obviously just put out the weekend lineup recently and for you guys to be a huge part of that. Um, and the internal email I think was great, was, you know, just for yeah. it to be, you, got, you guys got quite a bit of praise on that. Um, uh, yeah, I know, I, I read it and thought, oh God, we're gonna have to up our game. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is, it's, it's really exciting, it's like, um, you know, when you sign somebody like Ken Bruce to come to the station, it's like, a, to use a football analogy, it's like signing like Ronaldo or something, do you know what I mean? It's like a big name's coming to your team and and you, I think everybody else in the team would get a boost from that. Um, so it's um, it's really exciting to be part. Obviously, we're still staying on fourth one as well. And um, we've been doing Arlene and I have been doing separate shows and greatest hits for a, a couple of years now. I do, I do a show Saturday night, and Arlene does a show Sunday night. So we're going to team up and do the show together. And um, that's it's quite it's quite daunting actually, isn't it? A little bit because we've obviously got such a a strong following in Edinburgh, but to try and then take that to, mm -hmm. I don't know, um, Birmingham and Bristol and London, it's quite, it's quite, it's quite daunting. There's a lot of work for us to do, but I think it'll be, it's a challenge, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, but Corey yeah. mentioned that the the, the London centric attitude and it's always been there, but there's been a real shift yeah. recently, I think, in sort of the last couple of years, and I think it's really exciting to be part of that. Yeah. And um, the show that we're going to do is is obviously across the the network. Um, uh, throughout the UK, and I think we're looking forward to sort of bringing our brand of we'll personality. Slowly. I think that's the thing, <laughs> and hopefully connecting with a, a bigger audience. I think as well, just um, obviously you touched on, on Ken there, but you know, a big thing for us as well is to remain Scottish. You know, this is Greatest Hits Radio for Scotland. This isn't just an opt-in that's 
you know, has, has obviously been seen before. This is about us absolutely keeping our identity through everything we do. You know, and Michael and I, for example, have been through hours worth of conversations from everything about production to how, you know, we deal with how, how different we want that station to sound and it will be ours and it will be hugely Scottish and that will be fed through everything we do. Um, and obviously you just uh, mentioned Ken there. So um, for us, it was it was such a, a huge highlight. And the day that we announced them, I remember I just thought of like the anxiety, the rattling about as we knew that the last link was coming up because we hadn't even told uh, a lot of the team, you know, on the Hits Network, for example. But, you know, one of the proudest things for us was when we hit the news at 10 with the announcement. Ken Bruce has been a hugely popular presenter on BBC Radio 2 for over three decades, announced on air today that he was leaving the BBC. It's Popmaster time. First on today from Washington... His mid-morning show is the most listened-to show on British radio. Uh, he's going to be joining Greatest Hits Radio, having said that he'd had a tremendously happy time at the BBC but now was the time for a change. So, uh, plenty... Yeah, so hugely, um, a, a huge highlight for us, that one, you know, getting a, getting a hold of Ken, and that's, again, was one of those things that any show we've taken on Greatest Hits is absolutely taken by show and show basis. Um, and to, to not take Ken would be an absolutely crazy move. And actually, we're really positive about what that means for commercial radio for everyone in Scotland. You know, Radio 2's... You know, uh, it's it's huge, huge in Scotland, and we all know that. But actually, is that what the differences that we we'll see we see it already? You know, the audiences are jumping about from Radio Two. We hear it every day from people who are saying, "I used to be an avid Radio Two listener, and now I'm not." You know, so we're, I honestly think that we're going to start to see those shifts and have, have already from Radio Two listeners looking for something else. And there's there's a hugely successful commercial market in Scotland, um, and obviously we hope to be there to sort of sweep up as many of those as possible. But yeah, it feels like a, a really exciting time for for both networks, doesn't it, going forward as well, compared to how Radio Two have have been successful in the past. Yeah. I mean, obviously, um, Radio 2 is the kind of... The, the Radio 2 and Greatest Hits are going to be competing for a lot of the same crossover audience. And it's a bit of a double whammy, isn't it? So not only are we getting their biggest show, so we're getting Ken, but they're also losing Ken. So it's it's a, a double whammy. So I think it'll be... Uh, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the listening figures for Greatest Hits over the next couple of years. I think... Um, I'm feeling positive about it. I think it's going to be really good and also... You know, Radio 2 might, you know, it's a competition. You've got to try and steal as many of their listeners as possible, you know. I think the phrase you were looking for, uh, Victoria, was get it right up you. I was there. Yeah, that was, yeah. that was the moment. Yeah, I was, I was trying to be more diplomatic. I know you were, but um, yeah, I, yeah, I say it like it is. <laughs> um, but I personally, I just think it's, it's a really exciting time to be in radio, particularly in Scotland. And I feel very proud to be part of this team and very excited about the journey ahead. You know, it's great to have Ken on board. Um, it, it's, it's, I wonder what our but maybe we'll get new promotional shots. That yeah. would be nice, wouldn't it? Wait, wait, wait until you hear what Hugh Edwards says when you leave. <laughs> it's, it's okay, well, he'll be long be dead the by the time I leave. The news yeah. for you, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we've obviously just got about a minute and a half left, so we'll, we'll start to wrap it up. But Michael, you know, um, partnerships for Greatest Hits going forward. You know, how important do you think that's going to be for, for Greatest Hits in Scotland? Yeah, like, we're looking at everything at the moment, but the thing, big thing we're looking forward to in Ireland's camper van broke down last year, which was <laughs> hilarious. Uh, we've got Rewind Festival at Skin Palace, so that's a big thing. So we're just making sure our partnerships fit with the brand, and, you know, we've got loads of opportunities in Scotland with Forth and Clyde and all the stations, but I think, you know, with Rewind, you know, speaking to the biggest stars, 80s and 90s, having our talent there, getting branded up, it's all our audiences. Everyone in England goes, oh, my God, the, the, the punters in Scotland are nuts. It's like, yes, we know. Uh, but it's, it's good fun. So we're making sure our partnerships are the right kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's it's obviously part of the reasons as well for, for this entire change was also we can benefit from, you know, huge marketing campaigns and things like that as well that, you know, we haven't been able to do um, in the past where it was still the heritage brands of, you know, Clyde 242. So this really gives us an elevation now for, for what we can, how loud we can shout about this new exciting brand. Um, but thank you, you three, for being here today. No I really appreciate you being here with me. Um, we are super excited about this brand. We're super excited about both networks going forward. Um, this year feels like a year where we're, we're ready to run through walls, as I've said it before. Um, and I'll just leave you with one tiny little video from um, some new guy that we signed.
Greatest Hits Radio plays what it says it does, Greatest Hits. I love playing big tunes, big hits, lovely music, so it's the perfect place for me. I hope people, when they hear the news, will say, sorry to hear you're going, Ken, but maybe I'll try and find you and follow you wherever it is you're going. I've always felt that I've still got something to prove, but I think over the last few years, I've done everything that it's possible to do at Radio 2. I've had some great times, but it's uh, just time to try something a little bit different. The new home of Ken Bruce from April the 3rd. Greatest Hits Radio.